हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर प्रियंका चंद्रा असिस्टेंट क्यूरेटर फ्रॉम भारत कला भवन इट इज़ अ म्यूजियम ऑफ आर्ट एंड आर्क्योलॉजी सिचुएटेड इन द कैंपस ऑफ बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इट इज़ द लार्जेस्ट यूनिवर्सिटी म्यूजियम ऑफ एशिया एंड आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द स्टेटस ऑफ वीमेन वॉट वी आर फाइंड फ्राम द स्कल्पर्स द पेंटिंग्स एंड ऑल सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल डिपिक्शन ऑफ वुमेन इन आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर ड्यूरिंग गुप्ता पीरियड अप टू ब्रिटिश पीरियड सो दिस इज अंडर द पेपर वुमेन थिएटर एंड फाइन आर्ट्स सो दिस इज अ लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड फ्रॉम गुप्ता पीरियड अप टू ब्रिटिश पीरियड सो इट इज़ अ लॉन्ग टाइम स्पैन so we are dis- we we are going to discuss the uh, the position of women the depiction of women in uh, indian art in the sculpture or in the temple in the monument whatever the resources we are getting so this module deals with the depiction of women in the art and architecture developed during gupta period up to british period although it is a long time span when we can see how gupta queen was followed by queen victoria can be seen depicted in the coins in coins of india because you see the coins the gupta queen, queen kumar devi is also seen uh, seen depicted on coins and then during british period again we can see the victoria queen is shown depicted on coin so this may help to understand the value the position of women during the uh, during this time period in the society so it it has also been shown in the famous architectural buildi- buildings in india even during british period the queen of victoria can be seen on the top of the victoria memorial hall kolkata and also on the top of the fort at Shatri, chhatrapati shivaji terminus mumbai so in, in in the detail we will discuss about how the women have been changed that with the depiction what we are going to discuss in detail gupta period may be described as classic in the sense of the degree of perfection it achieved something that was never achieved before and has seldom been achieved since and in the perfect balance and harmony of all elements in style and iconography the guptas were brahmanical by religion with special devotion to vishnu but they showed ample tolerance for both buddhism and jainism puranic hinduism with its three deities vishnu shiva and shakti as the consort of shiva came to the forefront although the porkos are the most important works at ajanta the architecture of the cave temples and the carvings decoration the entrance portal are also outstanding in these temples forms which were originally developed in masonry or wood are carved out of living rock the sculptures both numerous and varied cover the entrance facade without any unified plan so uh, as we talk about gupta empire first we have to see the geographical locations it is you no know, extension of gupta empire in the image what we are able to see all the orange part is seen it is all the geographical area acquired by the gupta emperors so from north to south and east to west it is a large uh, geographical region uh, ruled by the gupta emperor and all the all of the uh, site is filled with the few um, uh, archaeological remains sometimes we are able to find the coins sometimes some uh, epigraphical uh, evidences uh, sometimes on the 
some uh, sculptures and sometimes terracottas also. As we know the Gupta gold coin are the main resources of art and history of Gupta dynasty. So in the Rajarani type of gold coin which was issued by Chandragupta first justify the position of a wife in the society because no any of the ritual uh, uh, process is not been uh, completed without presence of wife. So in this coin the marriage ceremony of Kumar Devi and Chandragupta first is being depicted. Uh, once we see the coin we can see the, the Chandragupta the king is offering vermilion sindur to the wife that is Kumar Devi. So it is a commemorative coin which which was issued on the on this particular occasion. So it 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 helps to understand the value of marriage in the society or value of the women in the society. So this therefore also denotes the cultural tradition of the society. In the Gupta period, instants are not rare of women participating in administrative jobs. But we have enough evidences like Prabhavati, the daughter of Chandragupta II, performed ad administrative duties in her kingdom. So instants of women in the upper class extending their phase of activities beyond the domestic circle are provided by the queen and queen's regent in Kashmir, Rajasthan, Orissa and Andhra. Institutions were established for co-education in the work called Amar Kosh that is a text written in Gupta era. Name of the teacher and professors are there and they belong to female sex. They were the author of Vedic script and mantras also. And we can see a small number of women with some measures of freedom choose to opt out of the normal householding activities required for a woman and become nun or trained to be courtesans or join troops of uh, performers. Harsha sister Rajshri. She was another outstanding woman in ancient India. She evinces as much keenness in the philosophical discussion held during her time as her imperial, imperial brother had been wont to do. The importance attached to a woman as a mother was by far the greatest. As a mother, she held a position of a great honor and implicit obedience was due to her. If she was regarded with tenderness as a daughter, as a mother, she was esteemed a symbol of all humanity and also a divinity. Even more respect was due to her than to father. There could be no greater uh, transgression for a son than a neglect or single his mother. The counter and richly ornamented surface of this celestial attendant to the god exemplify a stylistic shift away from earlier Gupta influence form. Here the liner play of surface decoration and dramatic contour replace the earlier emphasis on seamless volume and subtle balance. The sculpture has twisted the figure into an extraordinary pose that capture the essence of her dance and is, seems absolutely believable until one imagine actually trying to turn this way. The jewelry sways and emphasize her movements both in the way the necklace and sashes follow the curves of her body and in the upward thrust of the uh, spick, spicked tips of her crown. The crepe's carving of her adornments make a pleasing contrast with the smooth and round surface 
of her flesh image of dancing semi divine attendants often appear on the outer wall of hindu temple they are placed near the figure of god to honor the deity just as actual female dancer honored the god's image within the temple as we can see the sculpture from patna museum belongs to gupta period and we can see a lady is standing and uh, a parrot is seen towards the legs and the water coming out from the hand of the lady is being received by the parrot the way she is standing is uh, shown very uh, you know sophistication is shown in the sculpture and you can see the high relief sculpture has been starting showing in the figure as we know that the paintings at ajanta are very famous and belongs to world heritage sites in india they are situated in aurangabad district of maharashtra they belongs to the gupta period and the images and the paintings made on the walls are outstanding the females shown in the wall of the ajanta painting are very very fine the way they are depicting their eyes their hair and their body structure they are full of sophistication and beauty the expressions shows they are involved in various type of uh, social activities some images also shows that they are uh, related with some sexual activities also but we don't have enough evidences to prove these things now we move towards the post gupta period that is called as pal school of art after decline of gupta the sculptures were made under the patronage of pal kings they are popularly found in bihar and west bengal as we know that all the sculptures of pal period were made with black basalt stone so under the pal and sen rulers of bihar and bengal 8th to 12th century c buddhist and hindus made fine icons local black basalt stone the special characteristics of pal e finished figure are much decorated and well appearing to be made of metal rather than sculpture of pal school are found at nalanda rajgrih and bodh gaya iconographically three stages of nalanda art are recognized mahayan phase of bodhisattva image sahayana image and finally the kala chakra of the kapalika system now we can uh, discuss here another sculpture image uh, housed in the bharat kala bhavan museum it is again an outstanding figure which is called as shiva and parvati in kalyan sundar as we see the marriage as i uh, in the beginning i discuss about the marriage uh, scene which is depicted on the coin during gupta period and in late uh, and in early medieval period again a marriage scene is depicted on a panel and it is believed that it was in in the inside of a temple that is why it is intact and very very few damage you can see on the sculpture so this is a marriage scene of shiva and parvati where you can see the personification of fire is seen in the center and brahma the god is being the priest who is performing the marriage uh, procedure so shiva and parvati they are taking round of the fire and shiva is looking towards the parvati and parvati she is you know like uh, a newly bride getting shy when the groom 
looking towards her. So the expression you can feel on the beauty in the sculpture. All the, uh, the Bharatis, the Ganas can be seen on the top of the sculpture and all Navagraha. What, uh, they are also very important uh, during the time of marriage ceremony. They are also depicted here on the panel. The Hindu sculptures, paintings and architectures are the most important work of medieval art in India. In the north, the invasion of the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughals brought in the Indo-Islamic art, which is an important moment in the society of medieval art in India. The paintings of the Rajput school of art are of great significance during this era. The architecture of the medieval period is regarded from its metaphysical aspect that is as a kind of magic replica of some unseen region or scared begin. And that is was precisely the metaphysical factor that determined the plan and elevation rather than any aesthetic or functional consideration. The art and architecture of the Rajput holds a special position in the history of medieval art. The Rajput were Consider of art and architecture which is reflected in the temples, forts, palaces built by them. The later Rajput period include the temple architecture of Orissa, Khajraho, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and the temples of the Pallavas and the Hoysal in the south. Khajraho temples constructed by Chandel rulers belong to the Vaishnava Shiva and the Jain sects. The temple are built in well-grained sandstone and are put off on a high platform terrace. The temple have a covered entrance, a hall, a vestibule and a sanctum. The temple of Vijayanagar at Hampi is an important medieval architecture of India. All of these temple architecture or sculptures are decorated with female figures. They may be a goddess or may be a simple woman or a toilet bearer. Don't know why they used to do so. But the female figure definitely found as a decoration of peace on the temple or monuments. The sandstone statue during from the 11th century probably stood on the roof of one of the temple. Delicately carved woman appears convincingly as a living being to us, sensuously swing her hips. Her vulpacious nudity is accentuated by the gown that is torn off her body by the monkey at her feet. The sexual connotation is reinforced by the visible scratches to her lower nails on her shoulder and cheek. The often used motif in classical Indian love poetry. This sculpture is housed in the Museum of Netherlands, belongs to 11th century CE and it is called as heavenly beauty. As we were talking about the sculptures belongs to later Pal period or late medieval period. They were found from Nalanda. One of the important sculpture or image we can say is Mansa, the snake goddess. There is a female goddess carved in a form of a snake woman that is called Mansa Devi. It is believed that these goddesses is used to fulfill the wishes of local people, whatever they wish from the goddess. is seen in the form of a snake. You can see a snake hood is seen on the uh, top of the head of the deity. And the, the goddess is shown seated on a asana and uh, one of the leg of her is folded on the asana and another leg is 
rested on the earth and it is a four-handed goddess and holding weapons on her hand. A similar figure from Nalanda, what we are found is a head of a girl. As we can see the girl is putting some sindur kind of thing or some vermilion on her forehead. So she is involved in her beauty process. So she is adorning her, herself for her lover or someone. The expressions you can see on her face are outstanding and her uh, eyes are you know semi-closed kind of what we are seeing here. She is somewhat shy kind of appearing here and she is wearing jewelries, armlet and bangles. You can see her cloth and dra drapery you can see which is coming from the uh, right of her shoulder. On Khajuraho temples, many aspects of Indian life are depicted together with gods and goddesses, warriors, musicians, animals, etc. But the most common and popular depiction which have been carved are women and sex. The Nariband is in dispensable in architecture as a house without a wife, as frolic without a woman. So without a figure of a woman, the monument will be of inferior quality and bear no fruit. A place without love image in the opinion of culture is always a base for second place a dark abyss. The sculpture of Khajuraho has been inspired by an exquisite beauty of women that explored one represented her in superb human joy with morbid physical structure. Women have been profusely depicted on the temples of Khajuraho. Shilpa Prakash, a 10th century art text from Orissa, described the instructs the sculptor on the 16 type of women who best decorate a monument and how they should be carved within the confines of an upright angle. These 16 kind of women include Darpan, looking into a mirror, alas, relaxed and indolent, Ketaki Bandha, adorn herself with Ketaki flower, Nartaki, a dancer, Vinyas, pensive, etc. While some of these kind of women are easy visible in Khajuraho sculpture, some other type of women who adorn the wall of Khajuraho, even the gods have been shown with their wives and wives look very emotionally at the god who warmly cares their consort. Mostly she is placing her arms around god's neck and he is gently cupping the breast. Such sculptures of women comprise heavenly fairy dancers, Apsara, youthful heavenly nymphs, Sura Sundaris, youthful human, Naikas maybe, the women supporting with trees, that is Shal Bhanjika. As we can see an image from Khajuraho, the image of Apsara, she is putting Kajal on her eyes. You can see, you can feel the beauty on the on the action what she is doing to adorn herself. This is carved on the temple wall to decorate the temple. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Beauty is subjective. The belief in is that the perception of beauty underlines all creations. Khajuraho sculptures are real in their presentation and depicted feminine beauty during that period. There are many other aspects such as ornaments they wear, the tied back hair, the griddles and the nudity that give these figures their sensual quality. Large hip, thin waist, huge breast size and their globular shape 
and lotus petal eyes add to the women beauty here at khajuraho women are depicted in married mood and moments writing a letter applying coal to their eyes drying their hair playing with the ball looking into a mirror painting their feet or pulling out a throne therefore khajuraho temples are called a world of female beauty so all these kind of activities is largely been depicted on the wall of khajuraho so we can see a women we also seen writing a letter they are figured either in round or in high or medium relief on the outer and inner walls pillars and ceilings the sculpture of women of khajuraho seems to be belonging of three worlds the khajuraho sculptures have been inspired by exuberant fancies with transist visionary ideals of beauty ever created and express love of like and joys of existence the concept of union developed in the conception of the opposite to produce bliss and ultimately into beautitude the khajuraho women is only varied in her detail but her moods expressions and postures have been depicted in exquisite detail the females at khajuraho the figures either on round or in high or medium relief on the outer or inner walls pillars and ceilings the sculpture of women of khajuraho seems to be belonging to three worlds one is patal lok that is nagkarnya or serpent girls with cobras hoods then mrityu lok that is mortal world naika or beautiful lady devadasi or temple girl and third is swarg lok heaven apsara or damsel of god sura sundaris or celestial names like khajuraho sculptures there are other monuments which cannot be avoided while talking about the depiction of female beauty on those monuments so sculptures of dilwara jain temple architecture reached an elevated level of artistic excellence in 11th and 12th century ce during the ruler of chalukyas it is witnesses in the architecture of the jain temple of gujarat the dilwara jain temple at mount abu in rajasthan is constructed in white marble and is set up on a high platform with a compartment preserving a deity surrounded by a wall patio there are other shrine around the courtyard which has image of jain tirthankaras the oldest palace of the rajput are found in chittor and gwalior which date from the mid 15th century the man mandir of gwalior is enhanced in brilliant blue tiles the skill and maturity of the rajput style are evident in the palace of bikaner jodhpur jaisalmer and udaipur the buildings of the vast equipped city of jaisalmer are constructed with yellow brown stone and the city of bikaner is done in rich pink sandstone the pink city of jaipur marks the fine phase of rajput architecture the town planning represents an intermingling of eastern and western ideas the city palace is at the hub of the world city and is an impressive fusion of rajput and mogal architectural technique these architectural monuments are very significant as they are built with a mixture of rajput and mogal architectural technique but they are also important because they are adorned with female figures during the early 19th century the delhi sultanate invaded the most of the northern indian region 
the delhi sultanate included the mamluk dynasty the khilji dynasty the tughlaq dynasty the sayyid dynasty and the lodi dynasty the new techniques of art and architecture were introduced by them which were soon absorbed by the existing setup there were many features in the indian style of art which were similar to that of foreign architecture for example both mosque and the temples had open courtyard this fact made the adaptation easier in the art and architecture of this period a blend of indian and foreign style was absorbed the dome and the pointed arc were pioneered by the sultanate of delhi which were constructed as significant enhancing structure of the islamic building these exclusive style were gradually incorporated in other structures as well the local indian craftsmen were trained in the persian style of art which they used to adorn the structure the indian craftsmen incorporated their own thought which resulted in the fact that conventional hindu patterns like the lotus found their way into islamic structures the slave and the khilji dynasty were the early dynasties of the sultanate period they fashioned some elegantly planned structure with a fine work of art ornamenting them art and architecture was less adorned and more uncomplicated with sober during the region of tughlaq whereas the sayyid and lodi's incorporated more prolific style of art and introduced the idea of double dome the innovative type of ornamentation was highly influenced by the persian style art in the terracotta was also in voyage during this epoch this period was marked with great experimentation done in the field of art by indian artist they used the indian technique with the new ideas of the foreigners which resulted in the information of a coherent whole the delhi sultanate were absorbed by the mogul who invaded india in the year 1526 the mogul brought in the indo-islamic persian blend of art and architecture which included the features of islamic art and architecture which had been introduced in india by the sultanate of delhi medieval art in india reached its zenith during the region of moguls humayun's tomb at delhi embodied a marvelous landmark in the expression of sophistication of mogal style but it was under the rule of akbar that the art attained its highest peak the huge agra fort was a major architectural production during the time of akbar the establishment of capital city of fatehpur sikri and the huge fortification of red fort are among the other architectural magnificence during this era the sandstone architecture of akbar were replaced by marble masterpieces by his successor the taj mahal built by shah jahan is a lavish marble structure the mughal were great patrons of art and their intellectual competence and artist views was articulated in the most sophisticated manner with the muslim invasion sufism gained an entry in the indian panorama the medieval painting is the work of rajput school rajput painting is the work of artist attached to the princely courts of courts in rajasthan central india and the himalayan foothills of the punjab from about 16th to 19th century it is a style of painting that is a part in subject matter and conception from the exactly contemporary 
work to the artist attached to the court of Mughals, Rajput paintings always remained entirely traditional and its illustrations of the Indian epic, romantic, Vaishnava literature and musical modes. The development of the Rajput school of painting is the pictorial counterpart of the vernacular literature of Hinduism. The Rajput miniatures are derived from earlier classic style. In this regard, Rajput art might be represented as a merging of folk art with heretic and classic tradition. The Rajput painting are in a sense the product of development of popular Vaishnavism centered particularly in the devotion of Lord Ram, Lord Krishna who typified the worship of Vishnu and Shiva in their more accessible and loving aspects rather than in the heretic form in which they were venerated according to Vedic ritual. The rise of popular Vaishnavism coincided with the recessionism of Hindu literature and the belonging of Rajput painting in the late 16th century. Rajput paintings are usually on small scale though many of them are very obviously reduction of them originally employed in mural composition. The depiction of women in painting we will discuss in some other topic. So in India in the medieval period witnesses a wide range of development and progress. The architecture and sculpture of this era is marked with Indo-Islamic style and also the continuation of native art and architecture. Although Islamic footholds in India were made as early as the first half of the 10th century, it wasn't until the Mughal Empire that one observed emperors with the, a patronage for a fine arts. Emperor Humayu, during his rehabilitation of the Delhi Sultanate in 1555 brought with him Mir Sayyid Ali and Abd al samad two of the finest painters from Persian Shah Tahmashaf renewed at earlier. During the region of Akbar, the Persian artists were attracted to bringing their unique style to the emperor. Indian elements were present in their work from the beginning with the incorporation of local Indian flora and fauna that were otherwise absent from the traditional Persian style. The paintings of this time reflected the vibrancy and inclusion of Akbar's kingdom. With production of Persian miniatures, the Rajput paintings including the Kangra school and Pahari style of Northern India. They also influenced the company style, watercolor painting created during the British rule many years later. With the death of Akbar, his son Jahangir took the throne. He preferred each painter work on a single piece rather than the collaboration fostered during Akbar's time. This period marks the emergence of distinct individual style, notably Bishandas, Manohardas, Abul Al Hasan, Govardhan, and Dalat. The Ramzanama Persian translation of Hindu epic Mahabharat and an illustrated memoir of Jahangir named Tughlaqi Jahangir were created under the, his rule. Jahangir was succeeded by Shah Jahan, whose most notable architectural contribution is the Taj Mahal. Painting under his rule were more formal, featuring court scene. In contrast to the personal style from his predecessor's time, Aurangzeb 
who held increasingly out orthodox sunni beliefs forcibly took the throne into his father shah jahan with a ban of music and painting in 1680 he resigned saw, saw the decline of mogal patronage of the art meanwhile in south central india during the late 15th century after the middle kingdom the bahmani sultanate this integrated into the deccan sultanate concentrated at bijapur golconda ahmednagar bidar and barar only after the mogal conquest of ahmednagar in 1600 did the persian influence begin to affect deccan art and remain evident till date british colonial rule had a great impact on indian art old patrons of art becomes less wealthy and influential and western art more obsequious as the british empire established school of art in major cities that is bombay art society in 1888 the company style of paintings become common created by indian artists working for european patrons of the east india company the style was mainly romanticized with watercolor the primary medium used to convey the soft texture and tones by 1858 the british government took over the task of administration of india under the british raj the fusion of indian tradition with european style at this time is evident from raja ravi verma's oil painting of sari clad women in a graceful manner so in this period we can see the art forms which shows the status of women is totally changed the sculptures now converted into paintings and paintings they are creating the background of modern school of painting so it is said that it is a beginning of modern school of modern painting so we will see how the the females were painted by modern school of painters so here we can see there is a miniature painting belongs to rajasthani school and the lady is playing with peacock it is uh, shown that lady is in a very pleasant environment inside a forest or a garden because you can see the beautiful flowers are shown bloomed all over and the clouds are very cool and you can see on the pond the lotus is being bloomed and some birds are also playing over there and the lady is totally involved and she is playing with the peacocks so one a mature peacock and one male peacock and two female peacock you can see and she is holding two lotus flowers on her hand and she is looking towards the male peacock and you can see the sophistications is shown in the figure of the miniature painting the lady she is uh, wearing the lehenga and all the jewelries and the dupatta and the veil the the way she is looking towards the peacock is very very nice raja ravi verma depicts shakuntala an important character of mahabharat pretending to remove a throne from her foot while actually looking for her husband or lover dushyant while her friends call her buff a great painter badrinath arya has depicted an incredible technique of wash painting the impact of color in his work is vibrant and pulsating with life his creation savri a santhal woman is the largest wash painting stored in allahabad museum uttar pradesh nandlal bose was one of the pioneers of modern indian art and a key figure of constructual modernism a pupil of avanindranath tagore 
Bose was known for his Indian style of painting. He was influenced by the Tagore family and the murals of Ajanta. His classic work include paintings of scenes from Indian mythologies, women and village life. So as we earlier discussed the painting made by B. N. Arya Samari that is a Santhal woman. So how a Santhal woman look like? So women has a different different categories. Women from a normal uh, background or a royal background or a village background or sometimes a tribal background. So this she is from a tribal background and she has a very dull color. She is not very fair but she is very beautiful. The body structure, the shape of the body, the way she is standing, she is holding her hairs on her hand and putting her hair band, hair band on her teeth because she cannot put her band any other places. So she is putting her, she is holding the band on her teeth, on her mouth and holding her hairs, long hairs and putting a bun and or maybe a you know a trail and afterwards she will bind her uh, hairs with the help of the hair band and in the background you can see very little light is shown and the the trees with no uh, leaf you can see and two or three birds you can see on the behind and it is one of the largest wash painting. So wash painting, you know, there is a technique of making a modern painting that it is a process of making the canvas. Once you prepare canvas, make painting and wash it. And afterwards you again make same painting on the same background. So through this technique, this kind of Santhal woman is being painted here. So here you can see the paintings made by uh, Shitend Nath Majumdar. This is again Bengal School of Art. So no modern painting has not begun yet. So this is how the Meera is being depicted in Bengal School of Art. Meera is very popular character as we all know. She was a great devotee of Krishna. So you can see there is no in the canvas nothing is depicted only a small frame of temple and prominently Krishna is depicted and the Meera. So Meera is and she is holding Veena on her hand and playing some a bhajan and singing something. So again we can see another picture that is titled as two sisters. It is made by Nandalal Bose, very famous painter of Bengal School of Art. So this is now totally different background. A girl from a society. So two sisters, how they are looking outside. So they are inside their home, inside their house. You can see the arches. So inside the frame you can see a natural scene you can see outside. And two sisters, they are talking with each other. This is a time when the art were you know, fused with this Indian tradition of art and western art. So you see the coin where the very popular medium which can show the power of the ruler. So during the time of 16th to 17th, 18th century when Britishers were ruling in India and the, it was ruled by Queen Victoria. So how the people of India, they come to know that they are under the rule of Queen Victoria. She issued a coin of her name. So here we can see the power of a female which is shown on the coin side. That is the Queen Victoria. So in, in the same time period, what we are seeing, the women, the Santhal women and a devotee and a common women from a village background, and in the same time period, we can see a coin which depicting another woman who rules the society. 
दिस काइंड ऑफ रिमेन्स विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द स्टडी ऑफ चेंजिंग सीनारियो ऑफ वुमेन ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम पीरियड आर हाउसड इन विक्टोरिया मेमोरियल हॉल म्यूजियम इन कोलकाता और इन इंडियन म्यूजियम कोलकाता सो वाइल गोइंग थ्रू ऑल दो रिमेन्स और एविडेंसेस वी कैन सी दिस फैक्ट्स इजिली स्टो स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स नाउ समराइज वट वी हैव लर्न इन दिस मॉडिबल The above detail shows the royal women or normal women from the society and the women that have been imagined by an artist are successfully depicted in art and architectural panel they were also accepted by the society so we can see all these things from various uh, evidences and sources the sculptures the coins the paintings the miniature paintings modern paintings having different different techniques and the monumental uh, evidences are prove these fact thank you